Hello everyone, good evening and welcome to the second day of Northeast India Faith Conference live here at Faith Harvest Church. We are so blessed to have each and every one of you join us even this evening. You guys have been a blessing to us even if you have been watching from home, wherever you have been watching us from. We believe God has something something new for each and every one of you. So we want to encourage you to stay with us to the end and don't miss out on anything that you know God has for you in this uh, through this conference. We are believing that God is just going to pour out in this conference and you know we have been uh, hearing words from uh, our senior pastor Sean and even our guest speaker Bishop Samuel Pata about having faith you know having faith and we believe that even as you listen to, to us from your home from wherever you're watching we believe God is just going to move in your houses God is just going to move in your place there's no distance in the spirit the sp same God that's working in this place will work in your home will work wherever you're watching us from so please join us stay with us till the end and we have good news for each and every one of you we'll be going live even in our morning sessions tomorrow at 9 30 will be our morning morning sessions will start from 9 30 so kindly join us so the morning sessions will start from 9 30 it will go on till 1 and then there will be a break and we will see you in the evening at 5 the same process will go on even on this on saturday as well so we want to encourage you don't miss out on any of the services it's going to be going on till sunday so stay with us and we believe god is doing awesome things here and we believe that it will go it will be, you will be ministered wherever you're watching us from so don't just sit and watch but we want to encourage you to stand wherever you're watching us from stand and watch with us and even as the service is about to start be blessed and stay tuned
Hello church! How is everyone doing? (laughs) Good evening once again and welcome to our second day North East Faith Conference. Amen? I believe that even this evening God is going to do a mighty work in this place. And people that are watching us online, I encourage you to stay focused because God is going to touch you wherever you are. And I believe that even as, even as we enter into a time of praise and worship, I believe that even at this time that all of us, many of us, we are going to experience an encounter with God. If you believe, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. It has been such a wonderful time in the morning. The Word of God is really bringing so much of like a transformation in our hearts. Not only that, but of our thoughts also. And so much of healing that is taking place also. And I believe that we are going to experience even this evening again. So can we all rise up to our feet? And let's just respond in faith of what Christ has done in our lives through our praise and through our worship. Amen. So come right now. Let's just lift up the name of Jesus. Can we just lift up our hands and let's just thank God and let's just praise God for a moment. Hallelujah. Father God, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. We are so excited this evening for what you are going to do in this place because Lord, hallelujah, we are so confident, Lord, this evening. Hallelujah. Expecting the Hallelujah. Great things that you have installed for us, O Lord. So Father, hallelujah. People that are watching us online and people that are here, we are going to experience the touch of God. Hallelujah. So Father, we bless your name and we lift up your name and we glorify your name that the King of glory, hallelujah, hallelujah, is exalted in this place. It is all about Jesus and it is all about, hallelujah, His Hallelujah, love in this place. So thank you, Jesus, for your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Our God is good. Come on, put your hands together. Woo! Everybody in this house, if you feel like coming here, come, join in us, worship. Hallelujah. Praise. 
Everywhere, when it comes to India, the people pictured India as a nation of idol. But in this generation, we are going to declare tonight that India belongs to Jesus. How many of you agree tonight? India, our nation belongs to Jesus. Our nation is not for idol. Hallelujah. So this is a song called Prophecy. And tonight... We are going to declare it. It's a new song. Even for us. So you are going to help us tonight. Are you ready? Yes. This is a song called I Prophesy. Are you ready? Yes. I say are you ready? Yes. Here we go. <laughs> And the fear that tell me I refuse to agree with the lights they told me I take up my position
We all know that Jesus, in a fraction of a second, he turned water into wine. How many of you heard that? Yeah. And to bring out the best wine, they had to wait for at least three years. But without no time, Jesus just turned water into wine. Are you praying for some situation? Are you praying for such a long time that, Lord, now, I need the revelation now. If you are praying for that, we're going to sing this song together. Are you ready? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we just remain? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Can we just invite the Lord tonight? Can we just invite the Lord? Oh, can we just invite the Lord tonight? Oh, just invite the Lord. Come, Lord, tonight. Move in me. Just pray, Lord, tonight, tonight, now, at this moment, move in me. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. We worship you, God. We worship you, God. We worship you, God. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. Can we just lift our voice to the Lord tonight? Oh, Jesus. Turn into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Hey. None like you. Into the dark. Lift it out. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like Lift it up and sing our God. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any others. Our God is healer. Our soul in power. Our God. Our God. Yeah. Jesus, we lift up your name. Our God is stronger. Sing into the darkness. To the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you There's none like you And none like you Sing our God, lift it up Our God is greater Our God is stronger God, you are higher than any others Our God is healer Awesome in power, our God, our God. Sing our God. 
matanza Ori amalazande dide Hallelujah Hallelujah We sing it again We're going to sing it again Our God He's greater And tonight I just sense in my spirit That tonight Somebody need to declare this song Hallelujah Oh this is a revelation song For some of you people tonight Oh hallelujah Hallelujah Oh you are so timid But God is going to pour out just His spirit upon you tonight Hallelujah our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other sick. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God. Our sing our God. Somebody need to declare. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than As we worship the Lord, this is not just a singing song, but we want all of us here to stir up your faith. Oh, we see two pictures in Matthew 7. The two builders, the wise and the foolish builder. The wise man, he built his house on the rock. But the foolish, he built his house on the sand. Hallelujah. And tonight I want to ask you, which part, in which part of the foundation, your family, your ministry is founded? Are you on the sand or are you on the wise man that built his house on the rock? Tonight we just want to sing this song. Affirming our faith in Christ Jesus. But Jesus, you are my foundation. Christ is my firm foundation.
word of God says, the rain came, the rain blew, but the house that was built on the rock remained, stand strong, hallelujah. So tonight I want to ask you, tonight I was, I want to ask each individual, where is your foundation? Are you founded in Christ? Are you still on the sand? Come on. Rain came when when my house was built on you. <laughs> I Christ is my firm foundation. Is my firm foundation. We build our lives on the Word of God. The rock on not on culture, stand. not tradition, not religion, not even what our senses tell us. I'll never be more we build our lives on the Word and the Spirit Jesus. of God. Let me down this faithful true generations so why would he fail now he won't church I want you to let you know God will never fail you when you take a stand on his word God will never fail you when you choose to obey him and to follow him can you say amen Yesterday we saw in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 2 that the first use of faith is not to get things from God. For by it, by faith, the elders obtained, obtained, obtained a good testimony, a good witness, a good report about their lives. Hallelujah. The first use of faith is for your life. For your life. When all your friends are out there drinking and partying, because you believe in Jesus, you say no. When all your friends go out to discotheques and rock concerts, because you believe in Jesus, you say, I will not go. I will not compromise. Hallelujah. When you have lost everything, just like Job lost everything, he did not curse God with his mouth. He kept on believing in the Lord. 
It's not to obtain things, but it's to become a person. The use of your faith is so that you will become a man and a woman of God that is glorifying God in every area of your life. As a housewife, as a pastor, as an engineer, where the glory of God is seen through your life. As Paul said to Timothy, imitate me just as I imitate God. In the end, it's to become a man and a woman of God. It's not just to get things for your benefit. It's not just to get ahead in life. Even if all your friends are getting ahead because you obey God and nothing seems to be happening in your life, stay there. Your testimony is more important than your quick success. Can you say amen? You're working in the government. Everyone seems to be prospering by other means. Your testimony is more important For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Abel was witnessed by God that he had a testimony. Enoch was witnessed by God that he pleased him. Noah was witnessed by God that he obeyed him. Abraham was witnessed by God. God is the one who said, Abraham is a friend of God. By your faith. Hallelujah. There is a side of faith which involves dying to your flesh. There's a side of flesh which involves dying to the world. There's a side of flesh of faith which involves dying to selfishness. This is not taught in many faith circles. But it's to the tragedy of the movement. There is a side of faith which involves laying down your rights and loving the others. The primary use of your faith is for the testimony, the report of God over your life. That even when there is no breakthrough in your finances, you keep on sowing because that is your testimony. That is what God sees. You are faithful. That is what God sees. You are faithful. Even when nobody recognizes you and asks you to preach and asks you to sing, you come to church. You are praying. You are seeking God. You are faithful. Even when nobody knows who you are, you are keeping your testimony before God. That is called faith. Even when your church is not growing, pastors, you stay there in that village. You stay there in that colony because God put you there. And you don't run to the cities because you want a big crowd. You stay in your calling because that is your testimony. See, in the end, what heaven testifies is more important than what Instagram testifies. Hallelujah. Come, I want us to pray today. And I want us to surrender surrender ourselves surrender to the lord and say lord i'm going to use my faith for my testimony i'm not going to compromise with the world i'm not going to compromise with the ways of the enemy i'm not going to compromise with sin and temptation i'm not going to compromise with the deception of the evil one even if my life doesn't progress and even if there is no breakthrough and even if there is no fruit in the tree and even if my business is not growing and even if my answers are not coming yet I am going to stand on the word. Come, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray together. Shobri baba leta na broko mashte. Lebri makle vela bro moshtode. Lembri kamas de na mande. Lebri kamas de la broko ma. Yeah, that faith in your heart. That hidden faith that only God can see. That hidden faith in your heart. Oh, that is so precious. That is so precious. More than the externals. Externals. More than what you do on the outside. More than what people see. Is what God sees. Man looks at the outside. God looks at the heart. That hidden faith. That faith that says even if nobody knows me, I'm going to trust in the Lord. That is so precious. That is what God is seeing. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, pray that. Pray. Tell the Lord, Lord, I want to stay committed to you. Even if you have fallen a hundred times, pick yourself up and say, Lord, I want to be committed to you. Even if you have failed last week, pick yourself up and say, Lord, I'm going to trust in you. 
even if you have failed many times trust in the Lord and say Lord I'm going to follow you again I'm going to follow you again hallelujah come on pray pray in the spirit Rebri mama zetela, oh sibri baba mama dina mande, ahale deda brokoma, rekre mazete, oh zebri mama seta. Even if your parents had a bad testimony, even if your whole clan and your whole village have a bad testimony, you can change the testimony of your family. You can change the direction of your family. Oh, it's by your faith, by your faith in God, by your faith in God. By your faith in God, He will not abandon you. He will not leave you. Oh, you can trust in Him. If the Holy Spirit is moving in your heart right now, and you just want to come to the front and pray and kneel down and tell the Lord, Lord, my faith is for my testimony before you. I want you to come to the front right now. Hallelujah. If the Spirit of God is moving on your heart and you feel like I need to go to the front and connect with the anointing that's flowing up here and you want to just pray and pray and pray for the testimony of God over your life, over your family, over your clan, I want you to come to the front and minister to I want you to be ready to minister. Come, come from the balcony also. Bell on the balcony. Hallelujah. Shebri mama shdeta. What will heaven say over you is more important than what men will say. Hallelujah. Zamri mama shetela broko mashe. Zamri mama shetela broko ma. Come, come, come. Come and just stand. You can stand. You can just kneel. Whatever you want to do. But come here and pray. Come to the front. Hallelujah. You are coming for your testimony before the Lord for your commitment before the Lord, for your walk of faithfulness before the Lord. You are one to be like Job, like Job. Even if you lose everything and you lose all your friends and even if you lose all your possessions and even if you should lose your health for a season, yet you are going to trust in the Lord. Oh, you're going to trust in the Lord. You're not going to stop coming to church. You're not going to stop reading the Bible. You're not going to stop praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come, come, come. Zobri mafle bere gema she. Zobri mama, go ahead and start praying for them. Hallelujah. Zobri mama she kapam kandole. Lobri fakle mashte. Zobri mama she. Just hold her, hold her, hold her, hold her. Zobri makle bashte. Zobri mashe te. Just, yeah, just pray, just pray. Pray over her, guys. Don't just wait. Zobri mama she te la broko mashte. Zobri mama she te blama. Zebri kapam she. Zemri mama haste, zombri makle meste. Come on, I want you wherever you are standing, pray over your life. Oh yes, you are not going to be the same person. You are not going to be the same person. There's a change and a shift that is coming into your life. Oh hallelujah, just believe in that. Believe in that. Believe in that. Ask the Lord, hallelujah, to do a deep work in your heart by His Spirit. Oh the testimony. The testimony of your life will change. Oh, hallelujah. Zobri mama shotela brokoma. The Lord will take you to a new level. The Lord will shift you to a new place in the spirit. Zombri mama shete. Zombri mama shetela brokoma. Zebri mama shetela brokoma. Zobri mama shetel. Rokre kamande. Zebri mama sekle bari base. Zobri mama basete. Zombri mama setela broko ma setela. Zombri mama setela. Let's just hear, lay hands on them, lay hands on them. Just bless them, bless them, just bless them. Pray over their lives. Don't don't worry. The Holy Spirit will work in their hearts. Trust in the anointing. Just lay hands upon them and pray in the Spirit. The Word of God and the Spirit of God is working mightily in them. Oh hallelujah! Wherever you are praying. Shombri mama 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 Zamri mama de da la broko baba shete Zamri mama 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 Hallelujah 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 Even if the whole world should deny Jesus you will not deny Jesus Even if every young person in Nagaland 
they get involved in immorality you will not deny Jesus or oh, even if all your friends want to go out into the world you will stay in the kingdom that is your testimony Shemri mama shetela brokori mama deda broko ma de 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 Jesus will never fail you even when it feels like you are going to drown even when it feels like all hell is breaking loose when I was going through depression I decided to stand on the Word of God I did not listen to doctors psychiatrists I took my stand on the Word of God and many times the enemy came and whispered in my mind you are going to be embarrassed God will abandon you whole world will make fun of you you're going to be the laughing stock you chose to serve God not in a denomination but all by yourself and we were small and we were nobodies and we had no money and I was going through depression and the enemy whispered to me you are going to be the laughing stock and when I trusted in the Lord, I felt no breakthrough. I felt no victory. I felt nothing. It was so dry. I was saying, I have the mind of Christ. God will never fail me.
tears under my feet but it felt like I was drowning in fear but yet I continued to trust the word trust the word and trust the word and some of you are going through something like that right now you have prayed you have believed you have confessed you are trusting in the Lord but yet everything around you is contrary to the word everything around you is opposite of the word the Bible says Abraham contrary to hope in hope believed everything was telling Abraham you are never going to have your miracle you are too old Sarah is too old all the evidence was telling Abraham nothing is going to happen but in the midst of all of that Abraham believed in the word and God was faithful he'll never let you down he will never let you down so don't ever give up don't ever give up Wind blew, my house was built on you let the rains come rain came wind blew my house is built on the word sing it again rain came rain came my house was covid came covid came rain came inflation has come but my house is built on you wars will come I'm going to make it through. Come on, say it. Let the devil hear you also. I'm going to make it through. I'm going to make it. The devil is defeated. I'm going to make it through. I will finish my race of faith. I will finish my walk of faith. I'm going to make it through. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, rain will come, wind will come, and storm will come. But you, look at them in the eye and say, you will make it through because God is with you. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give a shout of praise to the Lord. Just welcome one another to church today. Up there in the balcony, welcome one another. God is good and God is doing wonderful things in our midst. 
We have an announcement video for all of us. everyone and welcome to Northeast India Faith Conference. Let's run through some announcements together. Merchandise are available including t-shirts at various sizes and colors as well as lanyards. T-shirts at rupees 500 and lanyards at rupees 50. Feel free to visit the lobby to purchase the items for yourself. We also have our book stable at the lobby with powerful books by different authors that will strengthen your spiritual growth. Get yourself one after the service. During the conference, prayer and prophetic booths will be accessible just below this hall. If you want prophetic words or personal prayers, kindly visit the booth. We will be providing bus services for the Northeast Faith Conference only for dropping purposes. Please take note, one bus will go from the church to Merima Junction and the other bus from the church to New Reserve Junction kindly avail the bus services. Also, we have great news for the parents. Child care services will be available during the conference, so attend worry-free knowing your child will be cared for by our teachers. Hallelujah. How many of you have gotten a t-shirt from down there? Believe how do you like that? Make sure you get one, all right? We only have 500 copies, and most of them are already out, so um, the small sizes are available. So those of you who are believing to lose weight, act by faith and go buy those t-shirts. Pastor Avi, small t-shirt you have to buy. <laughs> all right? Hallelujah. Well, a couple of announcements again. Tomorrow morning, we start again at 9.30 a.m., and we go all the way till 1 p.m. And then in the evening, again, we start at 5. And then on Saturday, we have something very exciting. It's called Healing School. Everyone say Healing School. So we want to invite you to come. And if you know someone who needs healing, whether it's cancer, whether it's any diseases that it cannot be cured by doctors, bring them. Because after that school, we will lay hands upon them. And God will heal them and deliver them. Can you say Amen. Hallelujah. So I'll be teaching out of a manual that I have developed for healing ministry. You can get a copy of that downstairs. I believe it's almost sold out, so we're getting more copies tomorrow. So get a copy of that, especially those who want to be used by God in the healing ministry. And it's going to prepare you and equip you for the ministry of healing. And then in the evening, is going to be again a powerful, wonderful time. It's going to be prayer school. Prayer school. Saturday evening. 5 p.m. where I expect all of you to be there. All right? So prayer school is going to be different because you're going to learn that prayer is a vital component of faith. You cannot divorce faith and prayer. Sometimes I've seen people who teach faith don't have a strong prayer life. And that is to their disadvantage. Because if you see men and women in the Bible who were people of faith, you also see they were men of prayer. Abraham always prayed. He lifted up an altar before God. Everywhere he went, he made an altar of prayer, altar of prayer, altar of prayer. And that is an aspect of his faith that is little taught. But he was a man of prayer. Amen. Then on Sunday, it's going to be wonderful again. Come to church and you will surely be blessed. Can you say amen? Okay. We're going to take up an offering this evening. Our offering is going to go towards blessing the man of God that's in this house to minister to us in this faith conference. Now, I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and I want to show you a different way of looking at things. Now, we are all here on the earth. So, we are aware of the earthly realm, the natural realm. So, let's just imagine for the purpose of illustration, this 
section of the stage is the natural realm and the earthly realm. But also because we have the Holy Spirit in us, we are born again, we are new creation in Christ, we have access to the spirit realm. Hallelujah. God is spirit. We are spirit beings. Can you say amen? So let's imagine that this side is a spirit realm and this side is a natural realm. In a natural realm, we have information that comes from our senses. That information influences our reasoning and we come to conclusions. In the spirit realm, we get knowledge from the realm of God. The knowledge of God's character, God's word, it is written. And that knowledge is a source of our faith. So, when you are giving, it's very important that your terminology of giving doesn't come from here, but it comes from here. If you think from here, you are not going to have the power in your spirit to give. But if you think from here, you're going to have the power in your heart when you are giving. There's going to be this excitement and this, and, and this invisible force that you're going to sense in your spirit when you are giving. Now, James chapter 2, the Bible says, don't turn there. The body without the spirit is dead. This is body. Now, in the world, we say, this is donation. I'm going to donate to your church. Please don't donate to Faith Harvest Church. We don't want your donation. You must understand the terminology. Look at verse 6. For I say to you, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Can you say amen? So let each one give as he purposes in his heart. You have to see from your heart when you're giving. You have to understand from your heart when you're giving. Not your hands, not your mind, all right? Not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. So God loves, loves. Today when you give smiling, God's going to love you more. Amen. All right. Now look at verse 10. Now may who supply seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. In context, even though there are so many people who will say this is not about finances, in the context of the scripture, these scriptures are talking about money. If you interpret the scriptures through hermeneutics, this is talking about money. This is not written for prosperity preachers. This is talking about money. Can you say amen? All right, so look at this. In the world, because of our conditioning, we look at this as cash. We look at this as donation. We look at this as offering. We look at this as contribution. That's the way your mind looks at it. But when you look at it that way, there is no force in your heart. There is no excitement. There is no power in your heart. So now you have to see this the way God sees it. God never says this is donation. God never says this is contribution. What does God say about this? Seed. Can you say seed? Seed. Close your eyes and say seed. See, the moment you say seed, your spirit is connected to the spirit word of God. Can you see it? See, from this perspective, you're looking at this as cash. But from here, God looks at this as seed. So when you look at it from God's perspective, your heart gets excited. Because now, you are not giving money. You are sowing seed. Spirit seed. Which will re produce spirit results. Spirit results is His Word. What word? Ephesians 1.3 Blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. It will manifest in our lives. It will bring forth a harvest. Can you say Amen? So, look at it from God's perspective. Not the earthly perspective. Not the traditional way of looking at it. Develop a spirit mindset. A spirit consciousness that comes from the Word. This is seed. It's not cash. Yes, of course. Now, when you go to the bank, don't go and tell them, I'm here to deposit my seed. They will not understand you. You are there in the world. So be wise. Use the language of the world when you're dealing with the world. But when you're dealing with God, use His language. Seed. Seed. This is seed. And God gives seed to the? So who are you today? You are a sower. You're not just a giver. You are a sower. 
a sower sows with this mentality and consciousness. Whatever seed I'm putting in the ground, it is surely going to bring a harvest. That's the mindset of a sower. It's sowing season right now in Nagaland. For plants, trees, I think. If I'm wrong, forgive me. I'm bad in agriculture. <laughs> but sometimes around this month, right? Okay, whatever. Those who sow, sow with the expectation that the seed will produce. So who are you today? You are a sower and you have seed. And you're sowing? Ah, again, who are you going to sow into? Are you sowing into a man? Are you sowing into a church? Are you sowing into an organization? The Bible says we give to him, Christ. Right? Here we give to men on this earth. The ushers come and collect. The church collects it. But there, that means there in the heavenly realm. We are here on the earthly realm. Hallelujah. We are here on the earthly realm. Here we give to men. But there, at the same time, he receives it. At the same time, Christ is receiving it. So develop that perspective. You're not giving to men. You're giving to Christ. But you're giving to Christ through a man who carries an aspect of Christ upon his life. What is that aspect of life upon Christ upon his life? Is the anointing. For example, you can see me, right? So let's just imagine that this quote is the gifting upon my life, the anointing upon my life, which you cannot see in the spirit. This is me. But whenever I stand before you to minister, I also stand before you clothed in the anointing of God. That way, when you perceive rightly men and women of God and you see them as a gift from God and you see the anointing upon their life and you see what you cannot see with your physical eyes and you believe that I'm going to receive tonight the word of God, I'm going to hook up with the anointing that's upon this man of God, you will receive from the anointing, not from the man. Are you following me? You would receive from the gift on the man, not on the man. So don't get offended with the man. Look to the gift that he carries. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. So when you give, what are you, what are you doing? When you give into the ministry of a man of God, you are not giving to the man. You are giving to the gift that he carries. Did you follow? You are giving, you are connecting by your faith, your seed to the anointing that he carries. So don't look to the man. Look to God. You're connecting to the gift that's upon the man. Hallelujah. In the Bible you see that when the widow of Zarephath gave to the prophet, there was no lack in her house. When that widow gave, you know, that oil, all that oil they brought according to the instruction of the prophet, there was no lack. In the Old Testament, whenever they went to a man of God, they never went empty-handed. I'm teaching you things that are not taught a lot. But those things, when practiced by faith, with a sincere heart, without any thoughts of videos you may have watched, against any kind of practices, in the sincerity of your heart, God sees your heart, when you practice by faith, God will surely honor your faith. Can you say amen? So that's what we are going to be giving into tonight. If you're watching online, you can give through the QR code that you can take a screenshot of. If you're here, here mortal men will collect your offering. <laughs> but you're not giving to the church, you're not giving to men, you're giving to Christ and through the expression of the anointing that He has released upon the one who speaks to us this evening. So connect to the anointing by your giving. Can you say Amen? Are you ready? Look into your heart. God supplies seed to the sower. So God will give every one of you seed. He will put in your heart what to sow. And the promise is this. I want to read this promise out to you. God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always having all sufficiency in all things. All grace. All sufficiency, all things, 
may have an abundance for every good work. See the word, picture the word, imagine the word, plant yourself in the word, see yourself in abundance. See yourself, I'm blessed with every spiritual blessing. See yourself sowing seed right now. Father, I just declare your word over your people and I decree that everyone that gives with faith will experience a breakthrough in their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Go ahead, serve on the people. And there is a QR code on the seats in front of you. You can scan with your phones right now. There are QR codes on the seats in front of you and you can give through that also, all right? Hallelujah. This is the most exciting part of the service. Do you know that? Because you're going to receive. This is receiving time. It's not giving time. Hallelujah. God loves a moody giver or cheerful giver. God loves a smiling giver or a frowning giver. Smiling giver, cheerful giver. Smile at the ushers as you give. They have come for your blessing not to take from you. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you have been so blessed in the two, three sessions we've already had in this faith conference? Can I see your hands? Hallelujah. I just want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for coming, choosing to come. We know that you could have chosen many other things, but you chose to come here. And that means you are here in the appointed time of God. And surely the word that God has for you is for the rest of your lives. It's a destiny keeping word for you. Can you say amen? So have this mindset, have this belief that this word is going to shift me from the place where I am to a higher level. It's going to shift me from weakness to strength, from lack to plenty, from sickness to health, from ignorance to understanding. There's a shift that is happening in your lives. And don't look at that shift geographically, physically. The shift happens here first. Hallelujah. The journeys that we take with God is in the heart. In the heart we shift and then your life will shift. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. I would like to invite Dr. Pata, Pastor Merlin up on the stage and also Pastor Steve. We would like to honor them with a traditional Naga way of greeting. So come Pastor. Bishop Pata is the senior pastor of the King's Temple Church from Hyderabad. And Pastor Merlin pastors together with Bishop Pata. And of course, Steve is the backbone behind everything that the Father does. I've observed Steve very intently, though I haven't expressed that to him. And also Steve's sister, um, Deborah. And one of the things that really caught my attention in pastors and Mrs. Wife was the fact that their children followed them and the children is in ministry with them serving God together with them which is such a treasure that money cannot buy and that's when I realized that surely they have that character they have that faith that they have built in their life and in their children that is bearing fruit and that's what I wanted for my own life too amen so we just want to honor you pastor with this traditional Naga shawl We also have scarves for the rest of the team. You can go down. Yeah, 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 Janet Devi. Can the team from Hyderabad kindly stand to your feet? The team that has come with Pastor Pata. And you can turn around to the congregation so that they can at least see you. We just want to honor you with the gift also. Come on, church, let's give them a warmer hand of appreciation, welcome, and honor. And one more person, or two more person.
Okay, you may be seated. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. So, are you all ready for the word? Shall we stand to our feet again? I want you to open your heart and receive. It's not often that men and women of God, the traveler around the world preaching the gospel can come to our church. So this is a time appointed of the Lord for us. So receive with all your heart. Amen. Are you all ready? Pastor. Thank you, sir. Say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hello. Hello. Check one, two. Check one, two. Six. Six. Check one. Check one, check one. Sorry for keeping you standing. Check, yeah, that's good. Yeah, praise God, amen. Well, let's shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Clap your hands and give God some praise this evening. Hallelujah. Every time we sit in the presence of the Lord and the word is ministered, you must get ready for an encounter Amen. that shifts you from one realm to the other. The entrance of the word gives light. When that word comes, light shines. The light doesn't shine outside, but shines inside. That's revelation. Once you capture the revelation and you begin to walk in that revelation is when you see miraculous things manifest in your life. The impossible becomes possible. Say amen. amen. We are in a season where something is about to happen. Amen. Do you believe that? Yes. Say amen. amen. Glory be to God. Lift your hands up and just pray for a moment. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Open your hearts. Cry out to God. Lord, we thank you for your presence. We give you glory. We give you praise. Alabrakatanamakua. Holy Spirit, we call upon you, my God. Have mercy upon us. Lord, pour your Spirit upon us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you, God. Lord, we're in the atmosphere, your atmosphere. Lord, and we pray for miracles. We pray for signs. We pray for wonders. We pray for transformed lives. We pray for souls to be saved. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. Come on, everybody. Lift your voice unto God and cry out. Cry out to God. He said, call unto me and I will answer you. Tonight cannot be the same as last night. Something good is about to happen because of God, because of his presence. Holy Spirit, yes, we surrender. We yield. We call upon you. We cry unto you, God. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, I thank you, Lord, I thank you. I, thank you. I give you the glory and the praise. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord our God. Blessed be the Lord our God. Blessed be the Lord our God. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Take over, Lord, tonight. And I pray, my Father, that the name of Jesus will be lifted high tonight. And Lord, your word will come forth with clarity. Lord, wis wisdom will flow. Knowledge will flow. Revelation will flow. Miracles will manifest. And Lord, your people will be blessed. We thank you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Once again, clap your hands and give God some praise. Shout. Come on, praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Come on, praise the Lord. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You may be seated. I'm going to call upon my wife, Pastor Merlin. She's going to exhort a little bit. And if God has laid something on her heart, she's going to speak forth. And we're going to receive that. Come on, if you're really glad, shout amen. amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, tonight is your night for a miracle. Tell that the person you are in the right place. 
like pastor said you could have been anywhere but you showed up here know that god is going to show up in your situation amen amen we're here to encourage you and and let you know that our god is a miracle worker a little before when we were coming pastor was talking about healings how god can he's a healer no matter what the doctor's report says but know that that god's word reigns over all so be it cancer or any incurable disease jesus can heal you. Amen. So whatever problems you're walking to this house tonight, let me tell you that God is going to meet you at the point of your need. Amen. I just want to encourage you by sharing a few testimonies, very short. I mean, uh, just to stir your faith because many times, this is what I say in my church, when you go to the doctors, they diagnose you with a problem and then you come home and you talk what the doctors talk. You come and talk to your friends, your family, and you say what the doctor is saying. But I want to encourage you that and let you know that God has the final say in your life. Amen. No matter what, what the doctors say, what the specialists say, know that what God says. He says you were healed by his stripes. Amen. So there was a young lady that came into our services with a third third of the fourth stage cancer, given up to die, and it was so bad. Her story was so bad. She came to our anointing services, and, and so Pastor prayed for her. We gave her the anointed mantle, and after the service, Pastor was led to just pray for her, and his prayer was, he said, can I slap you? I said, does he really mean it? <laughs> yeah. And so she said, Pastor, do however you are led by the Spirit. And so Pastor said, I'm not slapping you. I'm slapping the cancer out of you. To, to make the long story short, he went ahead. He said, I saw this. He just slapped her and the next thing that happened was she went to the doctors back and forth to the doctors doctor is amazed doctor is surprised what's happening in your body what did you take what happened to you the word of god went to work in her body hallelujah to the point she came with a report saying look what the lord has done all she had lost all her hair because of chemo and all that now if you see her i wish i could have brought the pictures she's a beautiful young lady with thick hair totally healed no cancer no trace of cancer in her body that's the god we are talking about he He's able, he's faithful. I say this in my church. I say the devil is a liar and Jesus is your healer. Amen. So don't sit there. If you have a negative report and the doctor said you have to live with it for the rest of your life. Who is the doctor? Like morning Dr. Pana was saying, who's the doctor to decide your future? Amen. God is the one. He said with long life, he will satisfy you. So whatever problems you have walked in with, tonight is your night. Tell your neighbor tonight is your night. Just last Friday, we had another testimony. One of our member's brother had a blood clot in his brain. And the doctor said that there's nothing we can do about this. He was on ventilator last stages. But we have life groups. And I'm sure you have it too. And they started praying in the life groups. And somebody reached out and went and prayed for him. They were here last Sunday sharing that no matter against all odds, against every negative report that the doctor gave, that person is healed out of ventilator. And many times when he's on, he or she is on ventilator, you think, Oh, that's all over. No, no, no. It, it ain't over. Because when God takes over, your problem is over. Hallelujah. Your sickness is over. Come on, that disease is over. That cancer is over. That, you know, blood disease, that kidney problems, they are over. Because Jesus is your healer. He, he came to testify. He said he was out of the ventilator. And no, they, they can't see no clot in his brain. How did that happen? Because he held on to the word of God. Every single, we are not here to tell you that we are great. We are here to tell you that our God is great. Come on. Somebody shout, Jesus is alive. Shout, Jesus is alive. Say, my God is great. Our God is so great, so awesome, so powerful. There is nothing that he cannot do. If you can believe tonight, you can walk out with your miracle. If you can believe tonight, you can walk out with money in your pocket. Amen. Hallelujah. God is the God of supernatural. Hallelujah. When you get hooked on to him, the supernatural will manifest. I don't know, maybe the person next to you, God speaks to him, put one lakh in, the, in your neighbor's hand. Get ready, church. I don't know, maybe God is speaking. See, see, your, your neighbor may not know your phone number, but God knows your double sim, triple sim, whatever numbers you have, God knows them. Hallelujah. And God is about to bless you tonight. As, as every head is bowed, every eye is closed, God just placed a few words. I'm going to do this very quickly. If you're here, you've walked in with severe pain in one of your ankles. It's really hurting even now. And God is healing you. All that you got to do is stand up. To your feet, take a step of faith, stand up to your feet and receive that word. 
there is anointing here. God is touching you. God is healing you right now. Right where you are, the power of God is going to hit you. You are the healed. That pain is leaving you right now. You might have walked in with that pain, suffering with that pain for a long time. Tonight is the night for your miracle. Tonight, you're walking out with your miracle. That pain is healed. You are healed and made whole in Jesus' name. There's somebody here that's suffering with stomach problems, stomach disorders. It could be IBS or whatever other disease it is. Anything to do with your stomach, maybe your digestion or, or the doctors are not able to diagnose what it is but you have this real nasty pain every so often. If that is you, just stand up, lay your hand on your stomach. You're being healed right now in Jesus' name. Come on, all over the place, wherever you are. Even if the doctor said it's IBS and they say you have to live with that for the rest of your life, not so. God is here to touch you and heal you tonight. Released. Please stand up and remain standing until we finish. We're going to release a word over you again. So if you stood up, stay, stay standing. Amen, amen. Because we're going to agree with you and the word will do the job. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, the word will do the job. The word will work like medicine in your body. So, and if you are here tonight, and this is what God said, every place that you go to, just release it, that, that, that there's going to be no more barrenness. If you're here, you've been residing for children and you have a negative report. I mean, I'm telling you, we have umpteen number of testimonies in our church. And if that is you, God is wiping away your tear. He's going to give you your baby next year by this time. Next year by this time, you you're going to hold your miracle, baby. I prophesy that. I declare, decree and declare that every time this word has been released, I'm telling you, people came with testimonies. Listen to this. More than you can ask, think, or imagine. A couple came. They were barren for 10 years. And do you know what God blessed them with? Not one, not two triplets. That couple. So I don't know what you're desiring for. More than you can ask, think, or imagine. It's happening now. Lift your hands. If your husband, wife, hold your hands. Believe that God will do it. He's a miracle working God. Come on. Maybe you want to stand proxy. If you're here, a relative, maybe mother, mother-in-law, husband, brother, whoever you are. God is giving miracle children's, children in this place. Miracle children. This is what I say. God is the baby maker, not the doctor. The doctor might have given all sorts of negative reports, but Jesus is the baby maker. Come on, stand up, rejoice. God is wiping away your tears and he is giving you your baby. And if you are here, and, 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 and I'm telling you, every single time this word was released, people that came in had miscarriages. There was a lady nine times and the 10th time somebody told them, go to the king's temple. And when she came there, she received, she conceived, but she lived in fear. But I said, this is what you got to do. Just, just take some oil, anoint your womb every single day and confess that you will bring forth a healthy baby. And that was so. That was the testimony. Hallelujah. And God will do it in your life too. So this tonight, God is here to give you your miracle baby. And and lastly, if you're here, you're suffering with any kind of allergies. There's somebody here, you are allergic to some sort of food and you even fear to look at that food. Come on, you're being set free right now, wherever you are. Whatever allergies you're suffering with, tonight it is finished in your body. Come on, there's some, come on, stand up, stand up. Come on, it's your day. You just stand up because I, this is what I tell my church. The anointing is here and words are being released. You grab that word, it's a done deal. So seize the moment. Don't let your miracle pass you by. God is here. Jesus is here in Jesus' name. There is somebody in this section in, in this section and you've been going through a financial hardship but tonight you obeyed what pastor said and you released a seed know this the bible says the cruise of oil will not dry up the jar of flour will not run dry that's going to be your testimony you did the word of god you obeyed the word of god get ready for your harvest amen amen yeah. okay. all those that are standing lift your hands up we're going to declare no hang on hang on if you're suffering with a lung condition, anything to do with your lungs, I want you to stand up. Anything to do with your lungs. This is your moment. This is your time. Anyone, praise God. All right, listen. We were in um, Switzerland once and um, God gave me a word about, I don't know if it were lungs or something, but um, this was, and, I, I, and also I had this um, knowing that, that this was a certain age group and I did mention that. And we prayed, somebody stood up and we prayed and we left. And then two days later, the pastor called us and we were talking and he said, this lady was suffering with something with her lungs because of COVID. And although she was out of it, she was not able to be healed. But when the word came, she was completely set free. I'm sharing that to encourage you. I don't know what the doctors have said, what your experience has been, how long you've been suffering with this for. Remember, it ends now. Not tomorrow, now, okay? 
Now, you heard me. If you were here this morning, you heard me teach on faith to some degree. You must hold on to that and develop that faith. From weak faith to strong faith. Don't let go of what God said and it shall manifest in your lives. Lift your hands up. Heavenly Father, we thank you, especially those that are standing. Father, we thank you and we give you glory for the words. And I, I declare, Father, even as your children are standing up to receive, we agree with them and we declare them healed and set free Amen. now in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Come on, clap your hands again. Give God some praise. Give Him honor. Give Him glory. Hallelujah. Um, one more thing I'd like to do before I begin to share. Ma'am, I don't know. I've been looking at you. And uh, can I just t touch you? You, right up here. Yes. No, no, not you. He, her, yes. Um, I've been, I don't know if this makes sense, but I think God's going to use you in healing. Uh, there is an anointing to heal. Maybe you're not even in ministry. I don't know where you're from, what, uh, but it may not happen right away, but I really believe there is some potential, something that's been deposited in you that has to be released. And God is definitely going to use you. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus. Yes. Can, can she come a little forward? I'm going to. Yeah. Thank you. Lord, I release that. In the name of Jesus. Let that break forth. And even as she lay hands, she lays hands. I pray the healing virtue will flow, that people will be healed and delivered as she ministers. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. God bless you. God bless you. Oh my God. I need my phone. I think this is dying on me. This, I hardly have any <laughs> juice left in this. Let me see if I can find this in my phone. Oh my God. Um, give me a moment, please. <laughs> uh, I should have charged this. We're talking, this is a, a faith conference, and we're talking about faith. Now, I want to talk to you tonight about faith for prosperity. Okay, faith for prosperity. You have to realize faith is not a cuss word, as some would depict it to be so. Some people are so averse even to mention the word prosperity, because they think this is not of God, this is of the devil. The, and some people have... I can understand some because some people who have been teaching have taught it in a way that it has been abused. The pendulum has swung too far on one side that it has given a bad taste in some people's mouths. But we can't throw it away just because of the abuse. We have to see if it is really in the Word of God. What does God say about it? And how do I tap into it? Because everything is by faith. Your salvation is by faith. Grace provides, but it's only by faith you possess it. Now, before I can possess it, I should know what grace has provided. Can I hear an amen? So what is the will of God? Let's look at John, 3 John chapter, oh, sorry, there's only one chapter, verse 2, 3 John 2. Beloved, above all, Above all, I wish that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospereth. Beloved, above all, I wish that thou mayest prosper. How can you say that prosperity is not of God? The Bible is so clear. It says God desires for us to prosper. Can I hear an amen? Talk to me. Talk to me. All right. I wish that thou must prosper even as your soul prospers. God's will is for his people to prosper. Not to live in lack, 
not to live in insufficiency, but to be in a place where they can be a blessing. When he called Abraham, he said, Abraham, I will bless you to be a blessing to the nations. Say Amen. Are you the seed of Abraham? My question. If you are, say Amen. amen. Say yes. yes. Loudly speak back. Are you the seed of Abraham? Right up in the balcony. Are you the seed of Abraham? Yes. Say Amen. Alright, say yes. If you are the seed of Abraham, the mandate that was given to Abraham is also my mandate. But the question is, how can I give what I don't have? If I'm not prosperous, how can I be a blessing? If I'm always looking to people, to government, to organizations, to some of the nations somewhere else, I'm not blessed. I'm looking for the blessing. How can I be a blessing? And listen, he's not talking about just you living the blessed life. God wants to use you as a channel to distribute his blessing, not just to your neighborhood, but to the nations. Somebody say amen. amen. That means you should not think first, I'm an Indian. You are a, you are a child of God. You belong to God's kingdom. Your economy is not dependent on the economy of this nation. You're dependent on the economy of the kingdom. There is no lack in the kingdom. Say amen. There is no ups and downs in the economy of the kingdom of God. Are you all in agreement? Yes. Come on. There, there is no loss in the kingdom of God. There is always increase. There is always abundance. There is always more than enough. God is a God of more than enough. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Jesus. God wants us to enjoy the abundance. He created the world, the earth, for us to enjoy. The good things in the earth that we see the world enjoying were not really created for them. They were created for His people. He did not create all the luxuries and all the blessings so that the crooks can enjoy it. But we are ignorant and that's why we are loving those that do not know God and are crooks to let them enjoy the blessing. You know the Bible says, my people are destroyed for what? Not because the enemy is too big. Not because the enemy is too powerful. But because of the lack of knowledge. Lack of revelation. Lack of understanding. This is what we require. We need to know who we are and what God has provided for us in the context of prosperity. So he says, Beloved above all, I wish that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospereth. I wish that they must prosper and be in health. Be in health. That means God wants every one of us to enjoy divine health. We all love miracles, don't we? We all love miracles? Yes. But that's not God's best for us. God's best for us is not to be healed from one sickness and from another sickness and another sickness. No, God's best for us is to live in divine health. Hallelujah. He wants us to enjoy divine health in, in such a manner that whatever my father suffered from, I will not suffer. See, we've been brainwashed and taught in certain terms and in certain ways in school and in college. Now, we don't deny the facts, but we have to understand truth is more powerful than fact. Come on. The fact is, there are certain sicknesses that people say, or doctors say, or science says are hereditary. Is that true? Your father, so that's why when you go to the doctor, they ask you a history. Did your father have high blood pressure? Did your mother have blood, high blood sugar? Did they have heart attack? Did they have this? Did they have, they're trying to see what your history was to trace it and to say, okay, based on that, uh, we are not surprised you have this problem. So we've been so trained to think in those lines that now we think, oh my God, my dad had arthritis. And so now about 55, 60, and I have a sharp pain in my knees. What's the first thought? Arthritis. Am I clear? Are you following what I'm saying? 
See, when you entertain that thought, you're opening the door and saying, Mr. Arthritis, please come into my body. You're welcoming him. Whereas you have to, and I have to realize, it might, see, he, the postman can come, the, deliver, the delivery man can come, but you don't have to receive it. If FedEx showed up at your door, knocked on the door with a box of rattlesnakes, would you receive it? No. So get lost, take it, that's your gift, not mine. So when the devil shows up with the gift called arthritis, you may receive it or you may reject it. You will not reject it if you don't know who you are and what God has provided for you. Yes, my dad might have had it. My aunt may have had it, but I will not have it. It's done, it's over because I'm a new creation. In me does not flow the blood called blood type called A, B, O, no. The blood type called G, which is God's blood. So I refuse to let let that come in through entertaining it through my mind. I say, I reject it in the name of Jesus. I do not want it. The pain may come. I curse that pain and say, take, pack up your bags and leave in the name of Jesus. It may persist, but I refuse to give him, give him cognizance or give him permission or, 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 you know, or accept it or, you know, and say, oh my God, I have this. No, I do not have it. Now, let me say this. Let me make it clear. I am not denying the fact, okay? I am saying the truth is more powerful than the fact. The truth is I was already healed. I've been set free. I'm a new creation. Now the very life of God is flowing through me. So that means, according to Romans chapter 8 verse 11, the very Spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead is now flowing through my mortal body, making it alive. Come on. So the body may be susceptible to these attacks, but I'm saying, hey, even though it comes, I'm not going to accept it. I am going to declare the very Spirit of God that raised Him from the dead is now working in the members of my body, resurrecting me, hallelujah, empowering me to take, to take authority and crush it under my feet so that I can live in divine health. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. You see, you have to understand, it is God's will for you to prosper with divine health, prosper in every area of your life. Prosperity is not limited only to finances. When, whenever the word prosperity is mentioned and you think only money or wealth, you're myopic in your thinking. Prosperity covers all areas and gamuts of life. Every area, what good is all the money and the wealth in the world for somebody that has been diagnosed with cancer and the doctor says, you don't have too much time left. Is that prosperity? Talk to me, is that prosperity? If somebody has toiled all his life and amassed a lot of wealth and he now has a great mansion, the most expensive cars and a couple of jets sitting on the air airport that belong to him, but he comes home that night, every night, to an empty home, no wife, because he didn't give her, give her time, she left with someone else. The children don't recognize him as father. They've left the house. They don't even call him once in six months. Is that prosperity? No. So please understand, don't be upset when the word prosperity is mentioned because God wants you to prosper in all areas of life. In your, first and foremost, in your relationship with God. That's why I said, as your soul prospereth. How can the soul prosper if you lack knowledge? As you receive knowledge, your mind is illuminated. The part of, the, part of your soul, right? Illumination comes. Revelation comes. Light comes. Now, based on that, I am beginning to understand the heart of God. That's why reading the logos is so important. I get to know the intents of God. I get to know the purposes of God. I get to know why God wants me to prosper. I get to know the vision for my life. I get to know my destiny. I understand so much more about the person of God. Hallelujah. It is only through logos now I understand God wants me to prosper. Hallelujah. If I don't read the Bible, I would never know. God never visited me and said, yeah, I want you to prosper. But if I read the Bible... I understand God wants every one of his children to prosper. Can I hear an amen? Yes. 
Turn to your neighbor and tell him or tell her, God wants you to prosper. Amen. God wants you to prosper. Prosperity is also, prosperity also means to have in abundance. No lack. See, this is the will of God. This is the heart of God. This is how God thinks. As I mentioned in the morning, after all, everything was created on the earth. The last thing that God did was create man. But by the time man was created and placed on the earth, everything that he would ever need was already provided. Your provision is on the heart of God. I said, God knows what you need. He's, he said, before you ask him, he knows. He's aware of your need. Then if he's aware of my need, why is he not providing? No, 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 don't ask that question. The question is this. Why are you not able to tap into what has already been provided? It's not that God is holding it back from, he has already released it. Now, if you remember something that I said, everything that God has provided for is in the realm of the spirit. Let me give you an example. For example, you see this, um, let's say that wooden stool there. Can you see the wooden stool there? Okay. God provided that. But somebody had to look, he looked at the tree and he said, that's a tree. Another man stood at the same, looked at the same tree, said, I can see a chair in it. Another man looked at it and said, I can see a table in it. See, it's perception. They looked at a huge stone. Michelangelo said, that's not a huge stone. I see David in it. Is that true? Yes. Come on. See, the word of God will give you that perception, that illumination, that where, where others cannot see, you can see. What others are not able to comprehend, you will comprehend. But that comes as you're illuminated in your mind. As your soul prospereth, so shall you prosper. It has to do with perspective. It has to do how you think. Most people are poor because they think poverty. Most people are poor because they always think lack. You're bound by your thoughts. You're liberated by your thoughts. What's a, what are thoughts? Thoughts are things, become things. But before a thought can become a thing, the thought is an image. See, when you're diagnosed with a sickness and you go to the doctor and the doctor gives some prescription, he says, this is what's going to happen. Immediately you see a picture in your mind. That's a thought. And so that thought, if it's, a, if it's a thought that generates fear, you begin to live in fear, although it has not yet manifested. Is that true? Why? Because the thought has become a picture. It's an, ima it's an image. It's an imagination. It's in the realm of imagination. Now that takes you, and the more you think about it, the more you believe it, whether it's faith or fear. And because you believe that, remember what Jesus said, be it unto you according to your faith. You empower that to manifest through your faith. Hello? I want you to know God intends for every one of you to be blessed. I want you to know God intends for you to be blessed to the point where you are a blessing to others. You're not excited. I'm the only guy excited in this house. <laughs> Good. Praise God. Thank you so much. Come on, I want every one of you to be excited because the Word of God is going, to, you know, is going to set you on another level altogether. He's going to pick you up from where you are and transport you into a place of where you enjoy the blessing and the abundance of God. God has provided. So watch what I said. Everything is in the realm of the Spirit. Whatever, your money, your car, your house, your land for the church, the resources for building a larger church and impactful ministry, everything God has released. And we are waiting for him to throw it into our lap. No, it doesn't work that way. Now God intends for us to take the element of faith and tap into that realm and translate it from there and bring it into this realm. Hallelujah. It's a partnership. God and man. Partnership. But what we want to do is pray and sit and do nothing about it. And we think the entire responsibility is on God. No, you play a vital role in manifesting God's love, His power, His wealth, His prosperity in your life. Say Amen. amen. 
Psalm 35 verse 27. Can you display that for me over here? Psalm 35 verse 27, please. Thank you, Jesus. Let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my, the righteous cause and let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who had pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. This is a very important scripture for me. Why? Because in the early days of our married life, as I said in the morning, we went through some very, very challenging times financially. Very small salaries. We lived in the outhouse of a wealthy people's house. It was more like a servant's quarters. We rented that. We had a one room at the bottom and a spiral staircase to go to the bedroom. In the bedroom, we had a mattress on the floor and my wife was pregnant with Steve. And so it was very challenging and we hardly had anything to eat. It was so bad that you know how when women are pregnant, they have cravings? And she had a craving for a particular kind of chocolate biscuit. I still remember the name, Bourbon, right? <laughs> She, she was craving for it. Honestly, I had no money to buy that. I still feel bad for, about, about that, but I had no money. We were struggling financially. And there was a day, there was nothing in the house but rice. What do you eat? How do you eat? I was alone. I sat, and I, I can see the picture. Where I sat, I remember. There was a shelf with some books on it. There was one book by Brother Copeland. It was full of promises of God. A, it's a small booklet. I sat on the chair, staring into that shelf, picked it up and started thumbing through the book. And I was reading the scriptures and my eyes fell on this scripture and something grabbed me. I said, that's what grabbed me. Give me that, please. Who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. God is pleased when his servants prosper. That became a revelation for me. And I said to the Lord, Lord, that means you're not pleased because I'm not prospering. And your desire. Now, I, I said, what I'm going through is not pleasing God. God, it's not God who is doing this to me. God actually wants me to prosper. God actually wants me to be blessed. It's not God who's keeping me in poverty. There's something else that's happening. It's a lack of understanding, lack of knowledge, lack of whatever. I mean, and, and I've been bound in this way of thinking that is causing this to happen. But both of us made up our minds. that few things that we decided right in the very beginning of our married life. Few things. Number one, we said we'll never tell people what our problem is. And for a pastor, it's very, very tempting to let people know what their problems are financially. And, they, and we know how to clothe it so it doesn't appear like we're asking for it. You know what I'm talking about, pastors? <laughs> and we, get, we are very, you know, because we know the right words to use and to not really beg, but really beg. <laughs> you know, like when I was a kid, I remember this. There was these uh, different people who would come home with a Bible in their hands. They'd come from a particular denomination. And uh, they would come home visit. And they're not from our church or our denomination, but they were people who believed in God. And they would go to homes and pray. So they would come home and uh, they would say, we're going to pray for you. And we would stand around, they would pray. And then uh, after the prayer, they would keep their Bibles open and say, we live by faith, you know. And, I, and I'm a kid now, okay? And I'm watching all this. And my mother or my father go inside, they bring some cash and they put it in the Bible. They close the Bible and walk out. I had an aversion for ministry because of that. I did not want to ever get into ministry. That was the last thing on my mind. And so they were giving the impression, and I'm not criticizing anybody, please, please don't misunderstand me. I'm saying we should have the right heart. We should have the right understanding. We are not at the mercy of the wealthy people. We're not at the mercy of man. We are at the mercy of our God. Hallelujah. And for God, He is no respecter of persons. He only respects faith. Say amen. He respects faith, not man. Hallelujah. He does not respect the color of your skin. He does not respect your nationality. He does not respect your education. He only respects faith. Hallelujah. And that night, we had to go uh, visit somebody and go and pray for them. And we prayed and we were coming away. It was 10 o'clock at night. And uh, we had nothing. We didn't know what we were going to eat tomorrow. 
Suddenly from a neighboring house somewhere, they started shouting at us and saying, please come, please come. And they don't even go to our church. So they called us and we went in and we prayed for them. And we were walking out. Uh, I think it was a birthday, somebody's birthday. They said, please, Pastor, please pray for us. We were walking out. They put an envelope in our hands. We never told them what our need was. We didn't know what was given to us. We come home and we open the envelope. There's just enough for the next day. Hallelujah. See, God is teaching us and taking us step by step. And from there on, God began to give us understanding. And it went on this way, but God really blessed us. Now, what are some of the things we decided to do? Number one, we said we'll never stop tithing ever. No, no situation. Now, you know, in those days, it was all cash. We did not have all these systems we have now. So the salary would come in cash form. We'd put the cash on the table and we would lay hands and pray. And the first thing we would do is take the tithe out of it. We used to have boxes in those days, okay? Take the tithe, put it in the box. Then we would have offering for the month, four, four Sundays or five Sundays. We'd take a specific amount and put that in another box. Then we said missions. This is with the very little we had, okay? And we put some for missions. Then we would say for widows and orphans, we put that into the box. Now, after all that was done, whatever was left is, uh, is what we use. We, we lived on, that's all. So we cut ourselves down to the size of what we were blessed. But while we were doing it, we were not limiting God. We were thanking God for all our supplies. Hallelujah. Now, God leads you and tests your faith as you move forward. So as this was going on, and we were not, not too bad, you know, uh, we were not living a really blessed life, but all our needs were being met. Sometimes there was a struggle. And we had also a box for daily expenses. Now, for, you have to understand this. When we put those amounts into different boxes, we had made, a, made up our mind, we will not touch what is in one box for the expense of another issue. All right? Because if I did that, that's mismanagement. That's the understanding God gave us. So we said, if somebody came and said, I had money, right, in all these boxes. If somebody came and said, look, we're in dire need and um, we need some help. We need you to, you know, we need, can you please, you know, give us some money or can we borrow some? I said, sorry, I don't have any money. Am I lying? I'm not lying. Why? Because I am responsible to do things as a husband. I'm responsible as a father to provide for my child. I'm responsible to take care of the rent. I'm now, if I take money from the rent or the daily supplies and deprive my family or deprive others from what I committed and give it to this person, I'm mismanaging my funds. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And this is what happens in large corporations too. If you don't have the principles laid down, it can affect your church, it can affect wherever you're working, and if you're in the position where you, can, you handle monies you, and you know how to distribute money for things, and when there's a need, you take from here and you spend it there, that is wrong. And that's how people get into trouble. That's why they get into trouble. No, if, if somebody comes and says, can I borrow some money? Yes, you can lend them if you have disposable income. Are you with me? Maybe you don't agree with me, but I don't care because this is how I live. Okay, I'm just letting you know what I'm doing. And uh, so, and we've been, and that's, that's the journey we're on, okay? Now, it was in 2000, now, right from the very beginning, I was very much influenced by Brother Hagen's materials. I never went to his conferences, but his books really impacted my life that I began to grow in faith and apply faith for healing. I also had the faith for the blessing, but I really did not catch on to that until 2000, the year 2000. We moved to Chicago to spend, you know, live, we lived there for about three to four years. And during that time, we went to Brother, sorry, Pastor Winston's church. When I went to Pastor Winston's church, he began to share about how the Lord led him, his wife, and his son, a little son, to Chicago with just $200 and no place to stay. And God wanted them to start a ministry. 
He said, when they came there, they had no place to stay. There was another, a widow who said, please come home and you can stay with me as long as you need to. So the home opened up. And so he began to live there and began to build the work of the Lord. And by the time we had gone there, they had 33 acres of land, a huge church building, and many uh, tenants on their property like Walmart, and I think there's Taco Bell, and there's another huge uh, chain which you would not know. But all these are renting places from there. 33 acres from 20 minutes from downtown. And he said, all this is by faith. It blew my mind. He came with $200. And he says, today we have all these. We have certain companies. And we also have aircrafts. And he said, all this is by faith. I said, Lord, what, what kind of Bible am I reading now? <laughs> what Bible is he reading and what Bible am I reading? Where is it that, how is it that he's enjoying all this, reading the same book? So I made up my mind and I said, Lord, this is what we need in our nation. Because at that time, even at that time, there were a lot of independent ministries and even denominations that were depending on funding that was coming from outside. And I'm not saying anything positive or negative about that, but that created a culture in our country where we stopped looking to God for our provision and began to look to nations and people and organizations to provide for us. Now, I know God can use them, but when we make them our source, then there's a problem. Because tomorrow, if the funding stops, will your ministry stop? What if, what if something happens and they're not able to provide? What if the government's now, we know what we're going through in this nation. They're trying to shut down all that funding, right? Now, what's going to happen to your ministry? If your ministry is depending only on funding that comes from outside and not on God, you're going to shut it down. So it's time for us to understand how does this thing work? Because my Bible tells me that even in the days of famine, you shall flourish. My Bible tells me that God can turn the wilderness into a garden of Eden. Come on. It can become a forest. The power to turn things around is not in the ability of the government. It's in the ability of God. But how do I connect to that? How do I tap into that? How do I manifest this? That's why we need the word that gives us the faith to believe for God's prosperity to manifest in our lives. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So I want you to know prosperity from the, the word in, in Psalm 35, 27, that word prosperity is the word shalom. Shalom means nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing wanting, and nothing needed. I'm going to repeat that if you're taking notes. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing wanted, nothing needed. That means everything is supplied. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So if I want to go into and experience the prosperity that God has for me, how do I tap in? I can't teach you everything tonight, but I'm going to attempt to, to take you in, on a journey, all right? Now, let me say this. Prosperity, and this is, this is going to surprise many of you. Prosperity does not answer to prayer. Stop. I want you to let that sink in your minds, in our heart. Because people are praying for prosperity. People are praying for increase in the finances. People are praying for their wealth to increase. It's not happening. Because prosperity does not answer to prayer. So what does it answer to? Prosperity answers to the covenant. Prosperity is a covenant issue. I, wanna, I want you to look at that. Get a grasp of this, okay? Because it's not how much you have today. It's not how much you don't have today. If you, are, if you become covenant conscious, no matter where you are, you can start growing and climbing from there. Turn with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 51, please. And give me verse 2 and 3, please. Uh, and can you change the background on that so that the words are clear? Like the black and white or something like that, so words are really clear for me to read. Uh, if not, it's okay. Let, we can continue to do that. Isaiah 51 verse 2, okay? 
Okay, listen to me, you who follow after righteousness. You who seek the Lord, look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the hole of the pit from which you were dug. Okay, verse 2. Look to Abraham your father. This is what God is saying to us, okay? Look to Abraham your father and to Sarah who bore you, for I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. Stop. God blessed him and God increased him. Not the nations around, not his country from where he came from, but no matter where he was, he was cons constantly increasing, although he was going through different terrains, different nations, experiencing famine, and all through that period, he kept increasing. Can I hear an amen? amen? So no matter what is happening around you, nothing should stop your prosperity. Nothing should stop your increase. Nothing should stop your blessing. And that can only happen when the invisible hand of God is upon you. So what you're looking for is not wealth. What you're looking for is not money. What you're looking for is not connections. What you're looking for is not influence. You're looking for God. I said you're looking for God. Genesis chapter 39 verse 2 says, The Lord was with Joseph and Joseph was a... Come on, everybody say prosperous. prosperous. Say prosperous man. Prosperous. Joseph was a what? Everybody shout loudly. Prosperous. Prosper Hang on. Let's understand prosperity. When that scripture is given to us, and it says Joseph was a prosperous man, Joseph was still a slave. Joseph did not have anything to his name because slaves could not have anything to their name. Joseph may not have had even a bank account because he was owned as a piece of furniture by Potiphar. He was at the mercy of Potiphar. And yet the Bible calls him a prosperous man. You have to understand what real prosperity is. The source of prosperity is God. So God is the only source of our blessing. Not man, not the government, not your connections, not your in-laws, not your parents. No, God. He can use any and all of them as his tools to prosper you. Come on, but they're not my source. So I don't look to them. I look to God. Hallelujah. Now the Bible says, Potiphar saw this and... He took his, all his accounts, his checkbooks, his properties, documents, and he said, Joseph, come here. From today, I don't want to know anything about my future, about my financial future. I don't want to know where to invest. I don't want to know where to plant. I don't, know, I don't want to know what crop you have to plant. It's all yours. Now, wait a minute. This guy is a slave. And in those days, Jews were looked down as untouchables by the, by the Egyptians. Can you see this? See, many times we think, well, I'm a minority. We try to take advantage from the governments claiming to be minority. I, I don't know how it works over here because most of this is described as uh, different ways. Northeast, I don't understand. But where I come from, there are a lot of people who say, in church, my name is John. In the office where they work, in the government, their name is Aparal. <laughs> They're hiding their identity because they say, if my boss knows I'm a Christian, they will stop the promotion. So who are they looking to? Not to God, but to man. They don't want to glorify God through, their, through the position God has given them. They say, I'm a Christian, but I want all the benefits that Dalits get. Hang on. Hang on. Are you a child of God? Are you the deprived one? Is God incapable of blessing you? Is God not able to provide you the best? Why do you have to sell your soul for a morsel of bread? 
If you truly believe God is your source, you will be bold to say, I'm a child of God. Even though you may take all those benefits away from me, I don't care because you're not my source. God will bring all that to me some other way. Come on, you have to know this. Hallelujah. And Potiphar saw how God was blessing everything that he put into Joseph's hands. Now question, how did Potiphar know that Joseph was a man who brought prosperity to him? Did he see a halo over his head? Did he go around with a Bible under his arm? Did he wear a special kind of clothing that says, I'm clergy? No. The results are the proof. People should ask you, how is it that you're blessed so much? How is it? I mean, we, we don't understand how you're getting blessed. But you are getting blessed. They can't deny that you're getting blessed, but they're intrigued and they wonder, how is this happening? They should come and ask you, what is the secret for this blessing? True prosperity is not having a lot of wealth. True prosperity is not having riches. True prosperity is having influence. Potiphar was a slave, sorry, Joseph was a slave. Potiphar was his master, but the master did what the slave told him. Joseph was a slave. The prison guard was of, over him, but the prison guard permitted Joseph to do whatever he wanted because of the influence he had over him. Come on, you got to get this. Influence in the realm of the spirit attracts these blessings. So the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. All these things shall be added. That means all, and I think Bishop Oedipo said, all the things that people are dying for shall be added to you. <laughs> all the things that people are dying for shall be added. You are not working for them. They are working for you. You know, I tell people, we should not be running after money. Money should be running after you. I tell people, listen, and this is not to boast about who we are. When you get the understanding, you become bold to speak like this. Because of the revelation of the word and knowing the power in the word of God. So I declare wherever I go, I and poverty are divorced for life. I am divorced from poverty. Poverty, I will never be poor. Based on what? Is it because of the wealth I have in the bank or whatever? No. Based on who God is. Based on my relationship with Him. He will not permit poverty to come close to me. Because of the understanding I have. That's why the word is so important. Your faith has to be established on what is written. Hallelujah. It is written that God desires you prosper. Watch what he said. I called Abraham. I blessed Abraham. I increased Abraham. It's my responsibility. God takes responsibility to prosper you and I. If you're excited, shout hallelujah. It's not that you have to strive to become prosperous. Your striving is not for becoming prosperous. You strive to, to grow in your intimacy with God and grow in your understanding of his word. I labor in prayer, not labor to get money. I labor in the word, not labor to make riches. When I labor in the word, I labor in prayer, I labor to build the kingdom of God, God causes the resources to come to me. They're attracted. I even say this, I'm a money magnet. I mean, some people get very angry about this. Uh, they think you're arrogant. I'm not being arrogant. I have so many experiences where people I do not know have come to me and said, Pastor, 
God told us or we are led by the Spirit or we are so touched by whatever and we have come to sow this into your life because we see that when we do this we get blessed we went to a town sometime back and uh, we were doing three days of meetings and uh, I was in a hotel and and these guys come to me and said uh, sir there's a pastor a senior pa senior pastor a very senior man in town he wants to come and see you I never met the man I never knew him and uh, he's I said oh, sure I mean he, he's a man of God I want to respect him I so he can come over so he comes over and he says pastor I've been listening to you and I'm really blessed you know you're talking about the sowing of the seed and how God prospers how I'm so blessed he said listen I have come to sow this into your life I understand the value of this I want to sow this into your life and leave just he was there for five minutes that's all he all he did was he came to give give that and walk away he came to sow the seed I did not ever know him I never told anybody that I have need I did not have any needs hallelujah and that's not one several times it has happened I remember another instance, there was a guy in the church who said, soon after service, he said, Pastor, you know what? I need to see you for a few minutes. Can I come home? I said, sorry, I don't let anybody come home. I need my rest. And I don't want, I want my privacy. So I said, listen, uh, I, I, I can't. He said, no, no, Pastor, please, just for two minutes. Give me just two minutes. I said, okay, two minutes is two minutes. He said, all right, Pastor, I'm coming. So he said, as soon as I went back, I changed, and he was right at the door. So I walked him into the office and said, what do you want? I thought he was asking for prayer. He, no, he said, no, sir. He pulled out a checkbook and he started writing. And, he started, and I started counting the zeros. <laughs> and you know what he did? He said, sir, I just came to obey God. God told me to sow this into your life. And he walked away. I'm telling you this to let you know God is our source. We don't have to tell people what your needs are. He He's the one that should know what your need is. He is the one that you should look to. He is your provider. He is your source. He will be the one that will bless you. I called Abraham. I blessed Abraham. I increased Abraham. Are you a seed of Abraham? Are you a child of Abraham? Are you a son of Abraham? What makes you think God will not do the same for you? Don't believe the world. Don't believe your experiences. Don't believe what people are saying. Don't believe the lies of the devil. You live in India, a third world country. You live in a remote place. You're so far away, at least two hours away from the nearest airport. How do you think any prosperity will ever manifest in your life? Shut up, devil. Shut up, devil. My God is not limited by airplanes. My God is not limited by where I live. I can live on the top of the hill or down in the valley. My God is not limited by geography. Prosperity is not geographical. Your prosperity is not located in the nation. Your prosperity is located in Christ. So wherever you live, whether in the boondogs or you are in the richest and the wealthiest city in the world, God is your source. Let that be established in our heart. God is my source. Only God. What are we talking about? We're talking about the covenant. So he said to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. My time is up. I've just started the introduction. I mean, I'm not, I mean, it's okay because I'm going to take you further tomorrow again, okay? My desire is not just to get you excited. My desire is to plant something in your heart. When you teach on these subjects, you may not experience, he, you, you know, I'm, don't limit God. You, while you're listening to me about prosperity, your bodies are being healed. Revelation is coming. Don't limit God. I said, don't limit God. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, get out of the country from your family, from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now go back to verse 2 please. Okay. I will make you a great nation. Who? 
Say Lord, the Lord, okay? God, okay? God is promising Abraham, I will make you a great nation. I will be, I will bless you and I'll make your name great. Paraphrase version. I will make you rich, famous, and distinguished. That's what God is saying. Paraphrase version. I'll make you rich, famous, and distinguished. How many are trying to become famous by trying to get more and more likes on Facebook? How many are trying to become famous by posting stuff on Instagram? There's a desire for, in everyone's heart to become famous. It's innate in people. But we are striving in our own strength. Let's not do that. Everyone has a destiny in God and everyone is a champion in God. If you will surrender to the Lord and do what he tells you to do, he said, okay, I will do all this, but it's conditional. You have to dislocate and move away from your environment. Because in your environment, there is pagan culture. Your environment is a heathen culture. It's idol worship. There's a way of thinking that has molded you to be who you are. If you have to move into your next level of blessing, number one, you must be born again. Number two, renew your mind. The mind is renewed to the word of God. Now, if you're living in an environment and you want to move to the next level, you have to first deal with the environment that is toxic or negative and keeping you locked in that place. Let me say something. Many of you who have come to this church have come from different denominations. And I'm sure you came from denominations where they don't give the emphasis on the Holy Spirit the baptism of the Holy Spirit, or speaking in tongues. Does that make sense? Am I telling you the truth? You came into this church, you heard the word, you believed, and you received the Holy Spirit, and you started speaking in tongues. Has that happened to anyone? I said, has it happened to anyone? What happened? You moved out of your country, out of that environment, out of that culture, if you want to become prosperous, you cannot be located in the place of poverty. Get out of the poverty mentality environment. Even if it's your own family members. If your church does not speak and is always speaking against prosperity, get out of that place if you want to experience the prosperity of God promises. So God said, I will make you rich. I'll make you famous, I'll make you distinguished, but you have to do something. Get out from that environment that is limiting you. Many of us are praying, are reading the Bible, but are not experiencing the blessing of God because what is hindering us, what is blocking our progress, and what is keeping us bound is the culture we live in, the environment that we live in, the words we constantly hear. It's keeping us, our mentality, to be bound by the spirit of poverty. We have to change the way we think. You have to see, now, you're at a certain place. How am I thinking? How do poor people think? And how do rich people think? Somebody said, when you walk into a house, into a poor man's house, you'll see the largest TV that they could, have, they could buy on loan. You walk into a rich man's house, you'll find a huge library. Come on. <laughs> Slowly it's getting on to you. Before prosperity can manifest, mentality has to change. God had to dislocate Abraham and bring him out of his environment, exclude him from everything that's been influencing his life, and now begin to work on him. So he journeys. As he's journeying, everywhere he goes, number one, he establishes an altar and he begins to worship God. Is that true? So what's he doing? He's growing in his fellowship with God. And he's able to hear his voice and God is influencing his thinking. 
He's constantly being reminded, I've called you to bless you. And my blessing is not limited to you, Abraham. It's that you could be blessed to be a blessing to the nations. Hallelujah. God wants you. Who? You that does not have a job today. You who think you have nothing left. You who think there's nothing in your wallet. Who you, who you think that does not have the, the money for the next meal. God is looking at you and saying, I want you to be a blessing to the nations. You're saying, me? I don't even have enough money for my next meal, Lord. I, I don't even have money to get back home. I'm actually using the transport, the public transport, and somebody's paying for me. I'm talking to you. God wants you to be a blesser of the nations. And God can make it happen if only you can believe. Because he said, to him that believeth, all things are possible. It's not by crying. It's not by begging. It's by expanding your thinking through the word of God. Changing your mindset. Changing your mentality. Seeing yourself in a place where by the grace of God, by the enlightenment that comes from the Holy Spirit, seeing yourself in a place where you are a blessing to others. Come on. Amen. See, and... And he says this, is making a promise to Abraham. In chapter 15, we don't have time tonight to look at that. You see how God cuts a covenant with him. He tells him how to bring the offering, cut them into half, lay them opposite each other. And then he falls into sleep and then the torch goes, the, the, the fire of God goes through it. And it's that's when the, the covenant is established. Now, we'll close with this for tonight. In chapter 17, verse, um, chapter 17, verse 1 and 2, and verse 6, please. Chapter 17. Genesis chapter 17, by the way. Now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of, no, 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 17. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am almighty God, walk before me and be blameless. Go on. And I will make my what? Say it louder. Amen. I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. Hallelujah. Multiplication is a result of the covenant, not your effort. Because in natural terms, he had no more strength to have children. Nor did his wife have any strength to have children, to multiply. He said, I'm making a covenant with you that I will multiply you. Go on. Uh, no, verse 6. I will make you exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of you and kings shall come from you. Somebody shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. Your seed that God will bless you with a royalty. You're saying, but I'm living in a rented house. It's a shack. I know. I know. I've been there. But my children are not going to be there. Because my faith is going to grow as I spend time in His presence. And the children that are going to be born out of my loins will have the mentality of a royal person. Royalty. Kings will come forth. Kings are people who have dominion. Kings are people who know how to rule and reign over their circumstances. Kings are not moved by people, are not moved by circumstances. They take dominion over that. God wants to give us children that will know how to walk in dominion in this world. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen. All right. <laughs> what, what is a covenant? A covenant is an agreement that is established. The, it's the highest form of agreement established between two or more parties. The highest form of agreement. And when it is sealed in blood, it can never be annulled. The only way out of a covenant, a blood covenant, is death. You listening to me? A blood covenant cannot be broken. Now do you understand why God says, I hate divorce? Because marriage is a blood covenant. And according to primitive 
cultures and according to the word as well. When somebody enters into a covenant, a blood covenant, and they want to get out of it, the only way was death. What if that was established today for every marriage? There would hardly be any divorces if you really understood what covenant means. See, when we don't teach the value of covenant, people think of divorce as an option. Divorce is not an option for a child of God. Because in the presence of God and in the presence of people, we have made and cut a covenant. And it's a blood covenant. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. So, do you understand now how serious God is about prosperity? Because he made a covenant with Abraham and I'm the seed of Abraham. Every promise that God made to Abraham is mine through Christ Jesus. That's what Galatians chapter 3 verse 29 says, right? Every promise that God made to Abraham is mine through Christ Jesus. So how dare you live in poverty? How dare you live in lack? How dare you suffer and struggle financially? You are not supposed to. You have to rebel against it. No, this is not my position. This is not my address. This is not where God wants me to live. God wants me to be in a place where I can be a blessing to the nations. Come on. Thank God for your business you have, small, medium, large, whatever it is. Thank God for your education. Thank God for your status. Thank God for your job. Thank God for all that. But they can never make you a blessing to the degree that you can be a blessing to others. Only God can get you to that place where abundance is where you live. You're not in lack. See, because that's the heart of God. When he said, cast your net in the deep, how much did he catch? Not just a handful. God provided for him and his neighbors and also so much that the boats began to sink and then this began to break. God is a God of abundance. Somebody say, God is a God of abundance. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. God is a God of abundance. And he wants you to have the abundance in every area of your life. Abundance of joy, abundance of peace, abundance of tranquility, abundance of joy in your marriage, abundance in the way your family lives, abundance in, in every area, hallelujah, including finances. Not exclusively finances, but including finances. Abundance. Everywhere in the Bible you see abundance. How many people needed to eat? 5,000 men, besides all the women, maybe another 5,000, maybe another 3,000 kids. Maybe about 15,000, 20,000, whatever the number. He started giving them, food, distributing the food. After, the Bible says, they, and they all were full. They ate to the full. They didn't just ration it out. They didn't just say, just eat a little bit until you get home. He gave them more than enough to eat and then said, collect the fragments. And people start teaching. People, God will meet your needs, but not your wants. Which Bible are you reading? Because he says in the book of Psalms, he will fulfill my desires. If I delight myself in him, he will fulfill my desires are not needs. Desires are wants. Talk to me, somebody. He said, talk to me, somebody. Desires are not needs. God does not just meet your need. He had to feed another 4,000. Again, there were baskets full left over. He started providing for the widow in Zarephath. He, her, she, her son, and the prophet. And it kept coming over and over every night, every morning. Every morning there was fresh supply until the rain showed up. God is not limited in his resources. There is no poverty. There is no lack in heaven. There is no lack in the kingdom of God. There is abundance in the kingdom of God. There's overflow in the kingdom of God. Now listen to me. We have to go to work. Not begging, pleading, harassing God. We have to go to work on ourselves. 
Sit with that word. Listen to this kind of teaching that will encourage you, build you, and give you a different understanding. Your mentality begins to change. As you sit under the influence of such teaching, it begins to expand your thinking and make you realize what is the heart of God toward me. And what I'm really experiencing is not God. God is not the source of this, supply, of this short supply. God is not the source of this evil. Or God is not the source of this lack. No, there's something else, and I can get out of it. As the word comes, light comes. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Let's understand prosperity is a covenant issue. We'll carry on tomorrow. Were you, are you being blessed? Yes. Have you been blessed so far? Yes. Somebody say this. I, I and poverty are divorced for life. Now for some of you it won't make sense. I'm telling you, you won't make sense. Why? Because you still don't have the understanding. But once you get the understanding, even though you may not have anything in your pocket or in your wallet or anything in your bank, you will boldly say that because of the faith in the written word. God has spoken, therefore I will now establish it in my life through my faith. Faith is the arm with which I will tap into the resources of God in the heavenly realms and bring them to manifest in the earthly realm. I cannot be poor. Can you shout that? Say it again. Say it again. One more time. Listen, if you're jobless, shout. I cannot be poor. I'm talking to the jobless. Come on, say it. I cannot be poor. Because now, you know, you find it difficult to say because you're, you're relating your prosperity to your job. No, in despite you not having a job, God can provide and God will provide and it's by faith. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. We had a profound teaching before I came up with my pastor about sowing and reaping. It was very profound. It was awesome. Now I want you to know, grasp that. This is not a deceptive way of trying to cheat you of your money. The church is not depriving you of your money. The church is not stealing. You know what I say to my people in church? I say, listen, give me some money, please, somebody. Okay, I might have some. Yeah, yeah I better have some. That's all right. All right. Everybody take something. Take, take your money in your hands. Something, some, maybe 500, 100, whatever it is. Take that in your hand, please. Quickly. You got it? No, no, I'm not going to ask you to give it as an offering. I promise I'm going to let, let, you, let you put back in your pocket, okay? Take that in your hands. Smell it. Stinks, right? Stinks. But you know what the Bible says? That in Philippians chapter 4, that my offering to God is a sweet-smelling aroma. I'm not giving money. What did pastor say? I'm sowing seed. So when I sow this into the kingdom, when I sow it into the anointing, God is not smelling this. He's smelling this. That's why he says, out of a cheerful heart. Because sometimes you can be smiling with a grumbling heart. Oh my God, I'm losing all this money. <laughs> Inside you're grumbling and saying, God, why are you taking me? Look at this man. He's cheating us of all our money. Look how these people are trying to... You know, when we initially started teaching and I was being criticized heavily in our place, many, many people started, you know, uh, you can put it back in your wallet. <laughs> many people, many churches. You know what they called us? They called us the money church. I didn't care. I said, and people were getting upset in our church. Pastor, they're calling you money church. They're saying, well, you're, you're preaching only money. You're talking about prosperity and nothing else. I said, hey, wait a minute. Did they call me to ministry? No, he called me. And he wants you to be blessed, not them. I don't care what they want to hear. I don't care what they say. Because I was not called for them. I was called for you. So I'm ready to take those criticisms. I'm ready to be crucified by these guys. I don't care. And I said to the guys in church, I said, listen, if you're one of those that feel that I'm trying to cheat you, 
deceive you and make you feel guilty and twist your arm to get that money? I said, take that stinking money and put it back in your pocket. I said, read my lips. I don't want you to give. Because you think you're giving a donation. You think you're giving to charity. No. If you don't understand and believe what I'm saying, you're not obligated to give. But if you understand and you believe what I say, do it and see what God will do in your life. How God will prosper you. How God will lift you. And I'm, to the glory of God, I want to tell you, there are amazing testimonies in our church. Amazing. Powerful. i got two of my two, three businessmen over here who have come at their own expense. They take care, they travel with me. And not only do they travel with me and take care of the expense, they also pay for me for many things that I never asked them to do. But they started with hardly anything. You know, one of those men, Praveen, could you stand up? He's a businessman. He was working somewhere and he was listening to the word. And it so happened that he, I, don't, I think it was five, he lost his job or something. And God really began to put in his heart to start a business. He said, Lord, okay. I'll do this, but I don't want to go looking for business. Business should come to me. And today, that's, that's his experience. Even till today, business is coming looking for him. He doesn't go around looking for business. Say amen. amen. He is not special. Every one of us can have that experience. Here is another young man. He came in his shorts to our church. He was a teenager when he came. All right. Today, he is really, really blessed really blessed. These guys not only travel in India, they travel with me internationally as well. And never are they a burden to the church. Never. But God has blessed them. I bring them sometimes to testify and encourage and make others jealous. You know why? Because at least that jealousy will cause you to say, I want to do the, what they're doing. By all means, I want you to be encouraged, stirred on the inside, so you will say, if God can do it for them, he can do it for me. Come on. I don't want you to go away and say, Pastor, that was a good message. I don't care whether you like what I preach or not, as long as something happens in your life. I did not come here to receive a pat on my back and somebody come and say, Pastor, that was a great word. I don't care. I've come to see and help and, and yield myself to God through, that through the words that come, up, come out of my mouth, lives will be transformed and we will begin to experience the reality, the power, the abundance, and the love of Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. If I don't shut up, I can go all through, through all night. All right, let's stand to our feet. Come on. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Were you blessed? Yes. I said, were you blessed? Yes. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say, I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Say, I am blessed. I am blessed. Hallelujah. That's not enough. You need to now next, move to the next level where you are a blessing. I am blessed to be a blessing. I am blessed to be a blessing. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for your word. Oh my God, your word is your power. So tonight, as we receive that word, Lord, that seed, Lord, hallelujah, I pray light will shine. Illumination will come. And Lord, revelation will flood our hearts that everyone, especially those that are struggling in their finances, will receive understanding and revelation that as they begin to move, with faith in your word, they'll break through every barrier and begin to experience the abundance of God in their lives. I pray, especially, Lord, for those that are struggling financially. Abundance be your portion. Abundance be your portion. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Clap your hands and give God some praise. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen. 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 Pastor. Wow, what a word. Amen. What a word. A word that is truly needed for each and every one of us. Hallelujah. Let that word explode in your heart. Because the power is in the good news. The good news is what you heard today. Amen. Hallelujah. If you can go home and read the same scriptures, watch this message again and pass it to your friends, do that. You need to listen again and again and again and make sure you do not miss the part two tomorrow. 
because it's going to continue in the same vein and there was such an anointing on this word today hallelujah so make sure you don't miss tomorrow's message and if you have very 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 poor friends bring them tomorrow <laughs> hallelujah and this is what we are going to do tomorrow we're going to take up another offering what you're going to do is this you're going to go home and you're going to pray and ask the Lord Lord give me seed that I can sow you're going to practice this word tomorrow blank out all contrary voices blank out all critical voices meditate on the scriptures give your attention incline your ear keep the word in the midst of your heart all through this evening and tomorrow and just get that drama word from the Lord and come tomorrow evening and so and we'll give the biggest offering our church has ever given and even as we do that I sense by the Holy Spirit right now the chains of poverty over many of your lives the spiritual bondage of poverty will be broken in the mighty name of Jesus I don't want us to take the offering tonight because you need to let this word simmer in you, prepare your heart, meditate, pray, fast if required. Go home, take your bank balance, take your checkbooks, bring it to the Lord, lay your hands upon it and say, Lord, I want to make a covenant with you for my finances that from today I will be a good steward and manager of your kingdom riches I will tithe I will give offering I will give to missions I will give to the poor I will make sure that I'm faithful with whatever little I have and even though I begin small one day Lord I believe you will make me a blessing to the nations and I will begin today and keep your target the nations that through your life you will be a sign and a wonder people will look at you and wonder how blessed you are today people will look at you and wonder and say how come your life is different and you will be a sign a sign a sign a sign a sign that when people look at your life they will say truly God is true truly the word of God is true you will be a sign you will be a billboard of third John verse 2 make that covenant tonight I sense by the Holy Spirit that is speaking to your heart don't be short time-minded one month two years three years for the rest of your life for the rest of your life you are making a covenant with God that your finances belong to him he is the one who will bless you hallelujah like he blessed Abraham the blessing of Abraham is on your life some of you will sponsor Bible school students I'm not talking to the rich people here. I'm talking to the ones who have nothing in your pocket. You will sponsor Bible school students in the future. Some of you will sponsor pastors in the future. Some of you will sponsor churches in the future. Hallelujah. That's you, you, you. The one that has no college degree, you. Shobri bate davroko mashte. You are not poor. Don't see yourself as poor. You are a child of God. You are a seed of Abraham. You are in the covenant. Let that word paint a picture of you. That you, the one that was in poverty, Christ died on the cross for you. His grace was shed for you so that you, through His poverty on the cross, you might be made rich. He took your poverty. Just see that verse coming to pass in your life. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands to the Lord right now, every one of you, in the mighty name of Jesus. And I want you to pray, Lord, this word will manifest in my life. Come on, lift up your hands in the name of Jesus and say this after me. The blessing of Abraham is on my life because I am a believer in Jesus 
and therefore I am an heir. Say, I am an heir of the promise. The promise that God gave Abraham. That surely God will bless Abraham. God will bless Abraham. And God will bless Abraham. And God will bring nations out of him. And God will bring kings out of Abraham. That promise that Abraham will be an heir of the world. I inherit that promise. Come on, say it by faith. I inherit that promise. Not by my works. Not by my good works. Not by my merit. But because I am in Christ. Because I believe in Christ. By grace, I inherit that promise. And that promise is sure. Sure in my life. Sure in my life. It comes to pass in my life. It is not by my works, but it is by my faith. I believe I'm an inheritor. I'm an inheritor. I'm an heir of the promise. So in Jesus' name, poverty, you are broken from my life. Poverty and lack, I command you to live my life in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name, I am rich in Christ. Come on, say it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I am blessed. I am blessed. With every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Come on, give praise to the Lord right now. Shobri mama geda broko mashe. Reka mandida mari mante daba. I am divorcing that land of lack. Come on, say it. See yourself walking out of lack. See yourself walking out of poverty. Hallelujah. You are leaving that place called famine and you are entering that place called plenty. You are leaving that place called poverty and you are entering that place called abundance and the purpose is the nations. Oh, Roma keda ma de da mande. Hallelujah. Shenama. Shekri kava shote. Shombri mambate. Don't define yourself with your father's lack, your mother's lack. Don't define yourself with the history of your family line. That family line is broken by the blood of Jesus. Don't define yourself. Don't look to your past and say, can I, can I, can I? Because my father never did and my mother never did. But the Lord would not define you by your father and your mother. The Lord defines you in Christ. You are Abraham's seed. You are not backward tribe. You are Abraham's seed. You are not poor tribe. You are Abraham's seed. Come on, say, I am Abraham's seed. In Abra I am Abraham's seed. By my faith in Christ, I'm a child of Abraham and I'm an heir of the promise. Oh, Mastebre Kibashete. Oh, if you can just close your eyes and look into the word and see that picture take shape in your spirit. That's why I'm closing my eyes. I don't want to look at you. I want to look into the word and declare what the word of God says. Hallelujah. Shomri makle vete la broko machete. Shemati da bro. Chains that have been binding your mind are being broken right now. I can see chains falling off your mind, your thoughts and falling to the ground and there is a possibility and there is a light, there is a spirit understanding. Oh, there is a grace that has been released upon your thoughts and your imagination and you can never go back to that old place of stinking thinking. You can never go back to that prison. From today, you are set free. Come on, say, I am free from poverty mindset. Say, I am free from stinking thinking. Say, I am free. I am free. I am free. Shobri mate da broko maklebe. Shena mate rehaklebe. Songri kavakle mesto. Hamadika masdoba. Rejoice, come on. Rejoice in the hope. Rejoice in the expectancy. Come on, rejoice in the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Whether you see it or not, rejoice by faith. Come on, rejoice by faith. Rejoice by faith. Rejoice in the Lord. 
And again I say rejoice in what Christ has done for you. Rejoice you are an heir of the promise. Rejoice. Rejoice. Ha ha. So lack you are under my feet. Poverty you are under my feet. Fear you are under my feet. Satan you are under my feet. In Jesus name. It doesn't matter whether I see it. It doesn't matter whether I feel it. It doesn't matter what it manifests right now or not. I am already blessed. Hallelujah. I'm an heir of the promise. And I rejoice in the word. Rejoice because of the light that has come here. Rejoice because God sees here. Not your wallet. Rejoice because God sees here. You believe his word. And you have faith here. And heaven sees this. Heaven sees your faith. And heaven acknowledges your faith. Heaven honors your faith. So rejoice that God sees your faith. And if God sees your faith, you are surely blessed. Hallelujah! Your faith is the tangible substance in the realm of the Spirit. It is not your money. Your faith is greater than money. Your faith is greater than lands. It's not the land that pleases God. It's your faith that pleases God. It's your faith that pleases God. So right now, just by believing I'm an heir of the promise, God is pleased. Do you know right now, you are pleasing God? Because you believe His Word. Do you believe the Word tonight? Do you believe? Do you have a conviction? God is pleased. God sees your heart. There is a tangible substance in your heart called faith that only heaven can see. And God sees that and says, I am pleased with Ramu. I am pleased with Raju. Oh, hallelujah. Live for heaven. Don't live for the world. Live to please heaven. Let heaven see your faith every day, not your wallet. Don't look at your wallet. It may be empty, but let heaven see your faith. Hallelujah. Father, I believe I'm blessed. Father, I believe I'm blessed. Father, I believe I'm healed. Let heaven see your faith every day. Let God smile and see your heart every day that you are believing. Ha, ha, ha. Shobri makle be. Your life will come out of your heart. Not of your, out of your bank account. Out of your heart. Your heart. Say, I believe in the Word of God. I believe everything the Word says. What the Bible says I have, I believe. Even though I don't see, I believe the Word. And I will not go back to unbelief. Hallelujah. Oh, there's such an anointing in this place. The Lord is releasing you from that poverty mindset. It's a spirit. Do you know that? The Lord is setting you free from the spirit of poverty. In the mighty name of Jesus. Break every chains of poverty in the minds and hearts of the people right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ha ha ha. Hallelujah. Don't listen to your feelings. Don't listen to your reasoning. Just believe the word. Only what the Bible says is true. It's eternal. It is forever. How much debris kavaste? Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor, you have a word?
Hallelujah. There is an anointing. And it's so strong in this place. Even though I announced that tomorrow. But there are some of you here. The Spirit of God is already moving so much. Ushers can come and just place some buckets up here on the stage quickly. And according to the anointing that's flowing in your heart. Again, don't be moved. By the words of criticism thoughts of your own reasoning let the anointing move you and if you're not convinced you don't have to come but the anointing of God is here so if you're led to sow even just right now I just invite you to come as the Spirit of God would lead you. If you're led to sow even to your neighbor right now, just give to your neighbor. If you're led to sow to a pastor next to you, just go ahead and bless someone. Let's practice the word right now. You can come in Jesus' name. I really sense that this is there is an anointing to break the yoke of lack. And this is not this may not apply to everybody, but if the Lord is doing something in your heart and you know you have to break through, and the anointing is here for breakthroughs. Anointing breaks the chains, anointing breaks the yoke, right? Removes yokes and burdens. So if lack is there, I really believe there's an anointing here tonight to come out of that. So if the Lord is stirring you and you know in your heart, there's no pressure, but if you sense that. Please rush to the altar and just sow that seed that the Lord is prompting you to do it in faith, believing that that's the key to break that yoke of your life. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. So come. Hallelujah. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. You sense in your heart to come. Just come and so. Zobri makle vejto, shobri makle ve, hahamadita, zebri kavamle ke. For you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, there is no one else like you, for you are great, you do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. Come on, sing a word. You deserve the glory. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. No one else like you, for you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. Sing it again. You deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. And the honor, Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we live in your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor, Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we live in your holy name. You are great. You do miracles so great. There 
there's no one else like you There is no one else like you You are great You to me become so great There is no one else like you There is no Oh, you are great You are great You to me so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you For you are great you to me because so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you now just lift your hands up to the Lord you have believed the word you have acted on the word now rejoice in the expectance of the glory of God in your life come on lift up your hands and rejoice 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 and say thank you Jesus praise you Jesus glory to Jesus thank you Jesus ha 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 the devil is under my feet poverty over my life is broken hallelujah rejoice rejoice and again I say rejoice because when we believe we have great expectance in enthusiasm oh hallelujah ha 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 ha. Ha ha ha. Thank you, Lord. Zombri kavaste ma. Zombri makle beste. Many of you, by the end of the year, will have jobs. That's what the Spirit of God is saying. Many of you, by the end of the year, don't reason this word, just receive it. Even last month, when I released that word, many of you already got jobs in the next 20 days many of you by the end of the year you will have jobs you will have a job you have moved from today out of that place that manifestation will come by the end of the year if you believe that say amen thank you father oh hallelujah Were you blessed tonight? Now that's what I call the Holy Ghost service. You didn't fall, you didn't cry, but that was a miracle. A miracle of giving. It's a Holy Ghost message. It's a Holy Ghost service. Revival is not always just crying and falling on the floor, shaking, no. The Holy Spirit moves in various ways. Come tomorrow, you will not be disappointed 9.30 we open in the morning, in the evening at 5 p.m. Can you say, I will be here? You said it. Balcony, will you be here in the morning tomorrow? Will you be here in the morning tomorrow? What time? Okay. People of faith do not lie. How many of you be here at 9.30? Can you say Amen come and get the word the word will work in your life God works in your life through his word can you say amen God sends his word he sends his word he sends his word and that word heals delivers prospers us you are blessed go home and be a blessing and we will see you tomorrow amen if you have been blessed come and just thank a pastor and say that you've been blessed but maybe you won't have time tonight so tomorrow you can do that too all right God bless you all Give a high five to someone as you go.
I believe that you have been blessed by the Word of God. If you have any testimonies or prayer requests any time of the day, you can contact or email us at the information given down below. And if this message has blessed you, we encourage you to please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Thank you and God bless you.